Oh, I think you gon' rap a band. Oh, man. I think you gon' rap a band. Oh, man. Think you gon' rap a band. Oh, man. Think you gon' rap a band. Oh, man. Think You're the same one that says they'll never hate. Now you trying to leave, you trying to separate. You don't regret it, babe. Oh, man. I think you're going to regret it, babe. Oh, why are you so deceitful? You're trying to trip up the people. You can't control your ways, but you complain all the day. Oh, you're doing things not oh, convenient. I pull a script I can tell. There is no knowledge within you. Oh, I think you gon' resonate. Oh man, I think you gon' resonate. Oh man, I think you gon' resonate. Yeah, I think they did. Yeah. Before every enterprise, we sought counsel. The way you acted now, it's not like. See, I'd rather leave than to start fight. Unequally yoked is what the words say. Relic for relic is not my foreplay. Stay together, do what the songs say. Bonnie ain't collide with Clyde, now we in the hallways. We all make mistakes, but don't get an excuse to do it. We all in the race, and everyone's a winner. But staying with a reprobate mind will keep you off track. And you don't want to backslide. Oh, man, I think you're going to reprobate. Oh, man, think you're going to reprobate. Oh, man. You're the same one that says they'll never hate. Now you're trying to leave, you're trying to separate. You won't grab a baby. Oh, man. I think you're going to grab a baby. Hear the truth, you had to see it like a spark. But when the tribes came, you straight to party. Temptation gonna come, and yours did. But you talked to him from a thought, he was like a little kid. Check it out. You called the diggers telling lies. Mad because they told the truth. Pray until the Lord flies. Sit in sweet, guess you got a sweet tooth. The most I'm knocking down your demons. Putting chains on your door like your Morgan Freeman. Your sisters and your brothers, you do not see them. Oh, yeah. You know I'm grab babe. You don't want to take it there. Oh. Causing contradiction in your mind. Oh. You don't wanna take it there. Take it there. You're a false alarm. You're going off, but you're not being warned. And slowly you fall apart. Fall apart. Fall apart. Oh. I think you're going rap for pay. It's been a long time coming now, bones start to come up out the grave. Come up out the grave. Here in Babylon the Great, but we was forced to be slaves. Uh, and ever since then, I ain't trust another ship, and I ain't trust another crack of face. Babylon I'm most wanted, and I'd rather that than to see my people locked up in chains. Locked up in chains. And I'd have been a slave so long, how do I escape? How do I escape? How do I escape? And I'd have been the greatest so long, I don't even know my name. 
up. I eat saw we were slain. The same man known as Alexander the Great. The same old man who the world know was Kate. The same old man who bought white Jesus. It was lies, it was fake. I'm fed up now, this some research. We the greatest people ever walking the earth. Y'all thought we were slaves, let me revert. Back to the law now, let me reverse. And prepare for the fight, cause Christ coming back like a thief in the night. And every man that's here gonna be grief in the sight. So much blood on his garment and the Lord sacrifice. Babylon, the grave, we were brought here as slaves. The boys out there to get you, be saved. Gotta meditate, meditate continually. Just getting by the minute, six seconds, so this beat right here to recuperate. You working out of fight without the whip and chains for your crib or home, but you're still a slave. Try to bury me alive, but I fell out the cast. Something like Thriller just went out the jacket. The father never loved you, something like a bastard. Now get at him. Now who told you that the sky was the limit? Mine out of space where the sky never finished. Keen him on his way and I'm trying to be attentive. Sin with them calves and I fly to be a dinner. See the cold ass black, but with the cannon we be filming. That's the time for repentance. We're the most wanted cause we all see the vision of the 12 tribes coming back. Nah, I ain't tripping. Man, you just ignorant. Babylon, the grave. We were brought here as slaves. The boys out there to get you. Uh, Shalom, family, most high in Christ. Bless. Happy to see everybody. Uh, we're going to send up prayers and we're going to get started. Spice the East. Men of Israel, blow trumpet. Father God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We thank you for your clarity. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your word. We thank you for each day that we have. Please, Lord, continue to guide us and give us wisdom and give us clarity as we uh, sort through the scriptures to bring out uh, true understanding. May the whole congregation say, hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Seats, seats, seats. Shalom, family, most high Christ bless. We here in San Diego again. Happy to be here. It is a uh, five oh six, five oh seven now, right? And then I I did a, a fifteen minutes with the captain called CP time, and then I'm late. So what had happened was, right? What had happened was, I had went with my son to the jump park yesterday, and we was jumping all day long, and then we went and ate. And then when I got home, I didn't get my wallet out of his backpack. So then I went, I had to run back home to get my wallet. What you got? You gonna say something? That's what had happened. So I feel bad. I hate being late. I was early though. I was running early. I had to run around to get my turn around, go get my wallet, and then come back. So I can't, can't be riding like this. I can't be riding dirty. And I gotta go to work after this, man. So uh, I guess the Lord just trying to uh, humble me, tell me to uh, sit down and be quiet sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Talking about people being late. Then you late. Dang it. I hate it. Um, but, yeah, so that's what had happened. That's what had happened. Uh, to my to my left, I got Officer JDL here. Shalom, y'all. Most high Christ bless. Over here on the ones and twos, I got uh, Officer Heads and I got uh, Officer Azariah over here. Uh, Going to help us out. <laughs> just shaking his head uh today today family most high christ bless we're gonna talk about uh a little bit of i mean the root of uh the matter is is that us as as israel as a whole is that we are uh caught up in all these different types of religion and uh one of them that used to really burn me up when i first came to truth with islam because i could not understand how we could like be involved in that Islam. I couldn't understand it. It would just, it would make me like confused. You know what I'm saying? Especially when I first heard the truth and you go try to, you know, show somebody the truth and they'd be like, oh, I'll, I'll read the Quran. I'd be like, what? I'd be, I'd just be done. Like, I couldn't give them the truth or nothing. Like, how can you, how can you read the Quran? Like, have you read it? I don't think people read it. 
I don't think they looked in the in the words. Go ahead. I used to have a book like about it, right? And right. I took it to work, and it was a dude uh, that was a security guard, and he was in Islam. So he go in my bag because they had to search my bag before I left. Yeah. Because I worked at the Apple store, so he go in my bag. He check it. He see the book. He just starts speaking to me in Arabic. <laughs> I just looked at him like he like you gonna be a smart man, brother. I was like, all right, bro. You know what I'm saying? I just walked back out of the store like, but brothers be gung ho for that thing. That's crap. Well, well, me before I came into the truth, I was trying to kind of disprove the Bible, so I had read the Quran. I had read the the Book of Mormon, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, the writings of Buddha. Uh, what else did I read? Uh, I was into this thing called uh, intelligent design theory. Uh, what else, man? All type of stuff. I was reading all type of stuff before I came to the truth. Uh, and nothing really made sense. And so the thing about the Quran is that it talks about the Bible, right? But then it got a lot of, like, contradictions in here. You know what I'm saying? It's just, like, straight contradictions. So we'll look at some of those things today. Uh, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm just waiting on you. That's, I am, man. Okay, in comparison to when you look at Islam today, right, over there in the Middle East, you got the Sunnis and the Shiites, right, you got them, and then over here in the U.S., you got this group called the Nation of Islam, and what the hell is that? Like, where do they fall at? You know what I'm saying? Most of them are just Christians with bow ties in the Quran, you know what I'm saying? Like, it don't make no sense. Like, they don't have, they don't have no... I don't say no, but they doctrinal beliefs don't align with real Muslims. You know what I'm saying? Like, just say it straight. Like, real Muslims, they don't align with them at all. Like, they just, it's just Christians with Quran. You know what I'm saying? So, you got anything? All right, we'll start with Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. Why not? We're 28, 15. We'll start right there. Because it's all about the curses, right? That's really why these things is on us at the end of the day, right? These curses. Go ahead. We'll start at 15. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Yeah. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So all these curses, right, it's going to come on us and overtake this. Let's look at verse 28. Verse 28. Yeah. The Lord shall smite thee with madness mm -hmm. and blindness and astonishment of heart. Yep. And thou shalt grope at noondays as the blind gropeth in darkness. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. Mm -hmm. And no man shall save thee. So it's a smitten with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. This Quran is, is madness. Blindness. Like you can't be reading this thinking you got no clarity. Like, this thing is, is nuts. You know what I'm saying? So we look at some stuff in there. It say, um, and thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. Right? So you, you, you got, because this thing, right, because what I got out of here when I read it is it kept pointing you back to the Bible. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, well, shoot. So it's like you you groping at noonday because this is telling you to go read the Bible, but yeah, you like I'm a I'm a Muslim, you know what I'm saying? I'm a Muslim. Let's look at something. Let's look at something. Let's start right here. Let's go to uh, we we'll got we get some of this, man. Uh, so this is the Quran. This is my little pocket one that I that I like to uh highlight and look at stuff in here. Um, uh, we'll start with this one right here. Hold on, it's like right in the front. I like this one. This one's always hilarious to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so this is in the Quran, the Book of Cal, right? The Book of Cal, and we're, I don't remember. It's like Sarah 60. I think that's how you say it, right? Sarah yeah, 60. Surah. All right, Sarah, Sarah 60. Here, you read that. Read that thing right there. That's highlighted in pink. So we're in 60 of the Book of Cal, right? It says, but after this, ye turn back, and but for God's grace and mercy towards you, ye, sh ye had surely been of the lost. Mm -hmm. Ye know, too, those of you who transgressed on the Sabbath. What did the Quran say? <laughs> those of you who transgress on the Sabbath. Those of you that transgress on the Sabbath. And to whom we said, be changed into scouted apes. <laughs> so 
it said, it said, if you don't keep the Sabbath, you should be changed to, to a, a scouted ape. To a scouted ape. What? It tell you to keep the Sabbath though. Yeah, it do. That's the point. Right there. I mean, pretty basically. Yeah, I mean, right. what do the what do Arabs do? Do they keep the Sabbath? No. What do they do? To my knowledge, <laughs> they ain't keeping. They ain't not cooking on the on the Sabbath <laughs> for sure, or not working. They out there working. They out there working. Selling bean pies on the Sabbath. Selling bean pies on the Sabbath. I I mean, I don't know how many times we went out to camp, seen them cats out there selling bean pies, and the, the final call. Right. Right. The, the final call. Right. They out there with it. Christian covered is uh they just Christian covered guys with dang on bow ties, man. They the same. They don't make no sense, right? Let's go to the Bible, right? Let's go to uh Genesis. I mean, I'm sorry, Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31. And we'll start at verse uh 14. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 31, and verse 14. Let's start at 13. Verse 13. Start at 12. 12. <laughs> and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, mm -hmm. that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Mm -hmm. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. Mm -hmm. For whosoever doth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from amongst his people. So it say you're going to get put to death for not keeping the Sabbath day. You know what I'm saying? Over here in the Quran. Get monkey on. You be get your monkey on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, man. Uh, the, the Bible tell you to keep the Sabbath day holy. Again, they just, we know, right? We know. I, I mean, I, I know that's been covered numerous times, right? Muhammad was a was a following around the, the Israelites over there and, uh, he picked up the verses that we was uh, reciting out of the Bible, and he just recited them back. He was, uh, what's the word, illiterate, yep. you know what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, and so he would recite the scriptures that was taught to him by the children of Israel. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, right. you can't make it something that it ain't. Right. Um, let's go to this. Let's go to this. Let's go to John chapter 10. Let's go to John chapter 10. I was reading this last night. Yeah, chapter 10, and let's look at verse 1. It's the book of John, chapter 10 and verse 1. Yep. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheep fold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Now you got to read that again. Sound like you're struggling. Right? Yeah, it was just a word though. But I, right. verily, verily, I say unto you, yep. he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. He said, if you try to climb up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Go ahead. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Mm. To him the porter openeth. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Okay. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were, they were which he spake unto them. So this is a parable that Christ was using, right? This is a parable that he's using. Okay, go ahead. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. So he's telling you, I am the door of the sheep. He didn't say Muhammad is the door of the sheep. He didn't say Elijah Muhammad was the door of the sheep. Christ said, I am the door of the sheep. Right? Let's go to this. We're going to come right back to John. Right? But let's look at uh, Malachi. Well, go ahead. You look like you want to say nah, something. No, Elijah Muhammad, man, just... It hit, it hit so. I read a lot about them brothers, like five percenters and all the stuff that came out of him. Uh -huh. One man influenced a whole lot of people to do nonsense. You know, it's, I'm sure you'll get into it, but yeah. It's not the first time. It's definitely not the first True. time. Let's go to uh, Malachi chapter four. What verse I want? Uh, we're going to look at verse four and five. Malachi chapter four and verse five. Yeah. Behold. We'll start at four. Verse 4, yeah. remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, 
for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. So he said, remember the law, right, that he gave to Moses, right? Never gave a law to uh, uh, Muhammad or to Elijah Muhammad, right. none of these stats, right? Jump back, jump back. Give, give me a Malachi 3 and 6, right? Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. Yeah. For I am the Lord, I change not. Mm -hmm. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So we say you sons of Jacob were not consumed. You Israelites, right, which are the sons of Jacob, you are not consumed. Right? Meaning we not destroyed. Right? Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Come on. Let's go back to this one more time. There's some crazy stuff in there, man. Uh, what I want. Let me read this. All right. So we still in the book of, this is the book of a uh, cow still. All right. This is 30. Sarai number 30. All right. Read that one. Highlight it. Says, O children of Israel. What does it say? O children of Israel. Why is that in there? It say, like we read in the Bible, it say, children of Israel not consumed. The Quran is talking about the children of Israel. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. Remember my favor wherewith I show what, favor. What? Read it again. O children of Israel. Yeah. Remember my favor. Remember my favor. This is in the Quran. Mm. This is straight out the Quran. We read and say, O children of Israel, remember my favor. It don't say, oh, children of Ishmael. Right. It don't say, oh, children of uh, Muhammad. Right. They say, oh, children of Israel. Israel. Go ahead. Remember my favor, mm. wherewith I show favor upon you. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. And be true to your covenant. <laughs> be true to your, what? <laughs> and be true to your covenant. That's what I'm saying. I can understand how people could read that Right. I, th I think this is what happens to us as people is like we read the words, but we don't comprehend the words in which we are seeing on the page. You know what I'm saying? We do a lot of that. We do a lot of consuming of information, but we don't really understand it. Understand it, right. Yeah. Yeah, man. Is that the end of that? No, no, no. Oh, uh, yeah, shoot, that's some more. No, nah, I mean, that's, I mean, it says, my favor wherewith I show favor upon you uh -huh. and be true to your covenant with me. <laughs> so he made a covenant right. with the children of Israel. Right. Oh my goodness. For his blessing. For his blessing. Right. This is in the Quran. Yeah, it's in there. I thought he made a covenant with it's it. In, it's, it's in the beginning of the Quran, too. <laughs> you read this, though, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I skipped right over that. <laughs> you just read right past that part. <laughs> like, mm, children of Israel, it's cool. Oh, keep, man. Keep reading. I had read it. I, I didn't read it with the understanding that uh, we was Israelites, so yeah. I just was trying to read it to try to gathered like i was like i said i was trying to disprove the bible but it kept talking about the bible so i was like well this doesn't this is not a foundational truth in which i can build on because it kept pointing back to something else yeah, yeah. My, mine was more so reading it to try to tie everything into god and see the similarities between religion and then when i read it i was like it's nonsense put that thing down quick let's go let's go back to this let's go to uh what's the one let me find it hold on it's a simple one but just just for those that have those thoughts that you just had, uh, I think it should be Ephesians. Ephesians 4, is it? Yeah, yeah, Ephesians 4. Let's look at that. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse, verse 1. Verse 1. Yeah. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, uh -huh. with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, mm -hmm. endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit of the spirit in the bond of peace. Mm -hmm. There is one body. So it's only one body. Go ahead. And one spirit. It's only one spirit. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. It's only one hope to our calling. Right? It's not. You can't. Right. You can't go this way with the Quran and say, oh, I got the Bible and I can kind of find the unity of God oh, in between God. Right. In between Islam and 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 uh, what else out there? Christianity and, and Buddha Buddhism, and try to try to mix all that stuff together and say, right. I got something I got here. Something. Right. Exactly. Nah, you got nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> confusion. That's you what got you a got. bunch of confusion. That's right. what they say, right? Got like me. they say in, in football even, right? If you got two quarterbacks, you don't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's pretty much what's going on. You got multiple quarterbacks. Right. You got nothing. You know right. what I'm saying? You got no leader. Right. 
Go ahead. What you No, no. Nah, nah, I want the, the next verse said it too. Let's go. Let's go. It says, uh, one Lord, mm -hmm. one faith, one baptism. Only one faith. There's only one faith. You can't put faith in something that's that's pointing back to something else. Right. How do you put your faith in that? Right. right. This is talking about the children of Israel in the Bible. Exactly. Why is this not standing on its own? Mm. It should stand on its own. Go ahead. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. One God mm -hmm. and Father of all, mm -hmm. who is above all and through all and in you all. So we say above all and through you all. So that's making reference to what? The Bible, to Christ, right? It's no Muhammad above Christ. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But that's what them, them, these Muslims try to do. Let's go back to Malachi. See, I just lose it. Let's go back to Malachi. Watch this, y'all. I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to show y'all the trick. This is what they do. Yeah, we was at four and four. Malachi chapter four and verse four. Yep. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, mm -hmm. which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, mm -hmm. with the statutes and judgments. Here it comes. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet mm -hmm. before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So it say, I will send you Elijah the prophet. See, these, these nation of Islam people will take that and say, see, Elijah Muslim Muhammad, Muslim. brother, your Bible is talking about Elijah Muhammad. Y'all got to be ready for these tricks, y'all. Y'all got to be ready for this stuff, Israel. I can't hear this stuff and be like, what? Now I'm confused. A lot of times, I, I think I said this before, a lot of times when I when I look at different stuff that I want us to go over, we might make mention of a different thing or another doctrine out, out there. And it's not because we giving it any credence. It's only because we want brothers and sisters to be uh, protected when they hear these different doctrines, so they don't feel like, oh, I'm confused now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and that's the that's the job of us uh, here at IUIC, right? Is to be that to be that uh that defense. You know what I'm saying to our to our brothers and sisters, right? What the, what the scriptures say? Uh, Acts. What do you say? You know what I'm talking about? In Acts, where it tell you uh, Acts 22, I think it is. You know, I can't really quote stuff. Mess it all up. Twenty-two. That's probably not right. See, it might, it might be twenty-seven. He say the protect the sheep. You know what I'm talking about? Twenty. See, there you go. Give me that. Acts twenty. Yes. Uh, Acts chapter twenty and verse twenty-eight. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Start at uh. Okay, yeah, 28 sounds good. Verse 28. Yep. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves uh -huh. to all and to all the flock, mm -hmm. over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So it say, take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock. So take heed. I mean, what? Pay attention, right? What heed mean? Can I get heed? What's the definition of heed? Take heed. What that thing say? Take heed. I want to make sure I'm taking heed. What does it say? Pay attention. The definition of take heed is pay attention, right? Take notice. Uh, notice, note, pay regard, bear in mind, be mindful of, uh, consider, take into account, take into consideration. Look at that one right there. It says be Guided by, obey, follow, keep. I see you here. Uh, adhere to, abide by, observe, take to heart, uh, give ear to, be alert, be cautious of. Okay, now it says uh, careful attention. Careful attention. Synonyms for this one for the noun is a uh, attention notice note regard heedfulness attentiveness consideration thought and care right let's look at this thing again acts chapter 20 and verse 28 yes take heed therefore so unto say attention to right be mindful of consider go ahead therefore unto yourselves uh-huh 
and to all the flock. And to all the flock, right? We got to be mindful of what different traps is out there that people might slip into. Go ahead. Over the which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers mm -hmm. to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Why? Why did he? Because each person that comes into the body, each member, each brother, each sister, each child, right? The Lord purchased that person with his own blood, right? That, so every, every person that comes through that door is precious. You know what I'm saying? So we got to make sure that we mindful. I'm not saying that everybody going to last to the end, but we have to do our part to protect the body. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's how I look at it. Go ahead. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. So grievous wolves enter in, not sparing the flock. They'll try to pull you into different doctrines to here and to there, right? Try to pull you to the nation of Islam and stuff like that, right? Let's go back. I keep losing it. Go back to, where was that? Malachi. <laughs> We're going to get to it. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, and verse 5. Yeah. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet mm -hmm. before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So when it say, I will send you Elijah the prophet, who knows what that's talking about? Anybody know what that's talking about? Facebook? Any clue? Say they're going to send you Elijah Muhammad, right? That's obviously Elijah Muhammad. We are supposed to be following Islam. Obviously. Right. That's what it's talking about. So that's what it got to be, what it's talking about. All right. We're going to find out today. <laughs> Go ahead. Check that out. Pay, let me know what they get. Let me know what they say. I want to look in this book right quick. All right. Adam said uh, John the Baptist. Scripture, please, Adam. Yeah, well, nah, no scripture yet. Just the answer. Answer there. Find it real quick. Matthew 17, 12. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, and verse 12. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but they have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Yeah, this is a good one, right? Referring to the fact that Elias was John the Baptist, right? Elias was John the Baptist, and that he came. Next verse 13. Verse 13. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Right. So that's clear, right? It's clear who, who was speaking of in Malachi when it, when it refers to Elias or Elijah, right? They're the same person, so don't get that confused. But John the Baptist is the one who came and prepared the people for Christ's coming, right? Not Elijah Muhammad. And a lot of times what happens is people uh, hear these different things, and without researching it, they believe it, right? Um, Elijah Muhammad went to poor communities, right, where people were had low education levels, I'll put it that way, and taught them something that uplift, uplifted them, but what it was was false, right? It helped, it benefited them at the time, but it didn't really give them the true understanding of uh, what they needed. Let me get this real quick. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 14 and uh, 33. It says, uh, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all, the, all churches of the saints. What happens is you are in the hood, you have confusion, right? And then a brother comes up and he says, I'm practicing Islam, right? A lot of times brothers turn in jail. Like right now, a lot of brothers turn Islam in jail, 
right? They 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 go to jail or they get into some situation or they're in the hood and somebody else is Islam and they just follow it. And, and and a lot of that comes from just how it originated in the first place. A lot of it was just people talking in the neighborhood and then it became a thing. No true research. Spray shenanigans. Right. With the whoop de wham. <laughs> Hit you with it. Um, what else y'all got? Was Good that it? Was that the time. only one they had? No, nah, there's a couple of things. Well, let's we'll see what else they got. That was it? Oh, okay. Okay. What you got? You nah, got anything else? No, 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 nothing different. You don't got nothing to go with the uh Elijah. Oh man, shenanigans, man. All right, cool. Which one did y'all go to at first? I wouldn't listen. That was the one one? All right, well, let me get another one, man. Let me get one. Let me get Matthew. I think I like Matthew 11. Yeah, Matthew 11 and verse 13. Well, help him, then save him, man. That's right. Why you save him? <laughs> Oh, okay. Matthew 11 and verse 13. The book of Matthew, chapter 11 and verse 13. Yeah. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. Yep. And if you will receive it, this is Elias. This is what? This is Elias. So when you see Elias right there, right, that's Elijah, right, in the, uh, what is this written in? Uh, I'm having a brain for it right now. In the New Testament? Greek. Okay. All right. So... Right here, this is Elias written, or Elijah written in the Greek. So it's the same word that you're reading in Malachi. It's just spelled different because it's a transliteration of the word. Make sense? All right, so it's the same word. All right, so read that again. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. Yep. And if you will receive it. If you will receive it. This is Elias. Yep. Which was for to come. Which was for to come, which was talked about what? In time fat in the book before. Right, it was talking about Elijah. Now here, now he here, now he is here. And when we're looking at from Malachi to uh, John right here, right, you got the the Persian captivity had ended, and you got uh, the Greek captivity. So we're looking at, I mean, at least four hundred years. I won't say five hundred, but at least four hundred years has passed from that point to that point. You dig what I'm saying? Um, so yeah. Let's go to let's go to some some stuff on Muhammad. Go. Let's go to Genesis. Where are we starting at in Genesis, bro? Genesis uh, sixteen. Twenty six sixteen. That's uh the creation of uh Ishmael. Yeah. All right, cool. So we can look at this, y'all. So the 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 main point we want to get out of this class is the difference between Islam and nation of islam like it's completely not the same thing right so as we look in the quran we can see that the the quran is talking about the children of israel but now let's talk some about the nation of islam and what they do let's go genesis chapter 16 and verse 3 oh you said 16 i thought you said 26 mm -hmm. 16 all right let's go genesis chapter 16 and verse 3 yeah and sarai abraham abraham's wife took hagar her maid the Egyptian after Abram had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband, Abram to be his wife. Mm. And he went in unto Hagar and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Mm. And Sarai said unto Abram, my wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. Mm. The Lord judged between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the, and the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water and the wilderness by the fountain and the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence camest thou? And whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. So it said, so now this is a prophecy given to Hagar in reference to her son, right? So it said, what that say again? And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly. So it says it's going to multiply that seed exceedingly as well, right? So when you look today, you got, uh, Iran, Iraq, uh, 
not. They not invaded Egypt, right? They ain't really Egyptians, right? Those are Arabs, right? right? You got uh, Turkey. Uh, you got uh, Kuwait. You got all the stands. You can't forget all the stands, right? right. Pakistan, Afghanistan, right. Uzbekistan, I don't know. Right. All type of stands, right? You got all of those, all right? So this is all Arab nation at this point, right? Go ahead, read that again. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, uh -huh. that it shall not be numbered for multitude. Yep. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, mm. and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. So the Lord has heard thy affliction. So he was named Ishmael, right? Because the Lord had heard her affliction. Is that it? Verse 12. Go ahead. And he will be a wild man. Oh, uh, yeah. Go ahead. His hand will be against every man. Yep. And every man's hand against him. Yep. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. So it's he's gonna dwell in the presence of all his brethren, right? And, and he's gonna be a wild man. Right. Now, when you look at the Arabs today, right? That's over there. Let's get that. Let's get the definition of uh, uh we got the Zondervan here. We'll look at this right quick. Can you give me Nation of Islam? Right, you can just wiki it. Nation of Islam beliefs. Prepared, bro. Oh, you got yours too? Yeah, what, just a race or something? What are we doing? Race and ready, set, go. You just got to tell me what I need. <laughs> what you need. I got mine. H I J. Okay. I got to yell out my alphabets. <laughs> I'm trying to find oh, the thing here. Ishmael. Let's say Israel. I got it. Ishmaelite. Read that. Ishmaelite. Uh, well. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, let's look at Ishmaelite. Let's look at. Yeah, we'll just look at that. Go ahead. Ishmaelite. Yep. A descendant of Ishmael, mm -hmm. the son of Abram and Hagar. Who Abr whom Abram sent away into the desert after the birth of Isaac. Yeah. The 12 sons of Ishmael. What? The 12 sons of Ishmael. So Ishmael had 12 sons. Ishmael had 12 sons. Go ahead. And his Egyptian wife mm. became princes and progenitors of as many tribes. Mm. They lived in camps in the desert of northern Arabia. Although occasionally some of them settled down as the Nab. Nabatians. 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 So when you're reading in um in uh Maccabees, right, you read about the Nabatians. Yeah. You read about the Nabatians. Those are Arabs, right? That was mixing in with the with the Greeks. So when you read about like Herod, um yeah, he had married a Nabatian. And that's where I think uh Herod the Great comes out. I have to get it in my book, but I'm pretty sure. Hold on, let me not just say something stupid. Let me look in here. Hold up. The Batians. Let me look up the line of Herod. Hold up. You keep reading that. It says, they lived in camps in the desert of northern Arabia. Although occasionally some of them settled down as in the Batians. Mostly, however, they lived like Ishmael, a wild man of the desert and also like him they were famous for their skill with the bow joseph was sold by his brothers to some ishmaelites this word is apparently used in the old testament in a wider sense referring to the nomadic tribes of northern arabia generally all arabs following muhammad's example claim descent from ishmael <laughs> arabs right. arabs right well, I mean, Arabs, yeah. Arabs, you know, Arabs. It's interchangeable where I'm from. Well, fine. <laughs> where <are> you from? <laughs> In New York, that's the same thing, man. Go to the corner store and say Arab or Arab. It's the same thing. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, read that last part again. Uh, Last last part. All Arabs yeah. following Muhammad's example claim descent from Ishmael. So all Arabs following Muhammad's descent, Uh, I mean, following Muhammad's example claimed descent from Ishmael. All right, so where did Muhammad come from? Where did Muhammad come from? Right? Let's uh let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go to um 
Where are we going? Genesis 21. Genesis 21. All right, so uh, we fast forwarding and forwarding and fast forwarding. Uh, Texas came out. Yeah, a little Texas. Uh, so you got Ishmael, right? He married an Egyptian woman. They had 12 sons, right? So we're going to figure out where Muhammad came from. Go ahead. You just want Whatever you want. Uh, Genesis chapter 21 and verse 17. Yeah. And God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran. And his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. Okay, so, so he got him a wife, yeah. right? She was an Egyptian, right? So Abraham was a dark-skinned brother, right? Hagar was Egyptian, so she was Sharpie black. <laughs> they got a different type of dark-skinnedness. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> they definitely do it. It's not even, it's not like our dark skin. It's like blue, black, purple. <laughs> it's like sharpiness. You know what I'm saying? I like to call it sharpiness. Uh, like when your TV too dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know All right, so then, uh, so this brother that had, so Ishmael had a dark-skinned father and a sharpie black mama, right? Then he married another sharpie, you know what I'm saying? An Egyptian woman. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so what would that make his children? Black, black, blue, black. Nah. Right. They would be like olive. Olive? Okay. <laughs> 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 olive. What the hell is olive? Uh, that's what they be saying. Green. Right? They green. <laughs> like green children. <laughs> green. <laughs> Green children. Uh, man, they'd be dark-skinned people, right? right? Like you said, right? right? They'd be pretty dark. All right, let's go to that. Where are we going? Uh, Genesis 25 and verse 12. Go ahead. Now, these are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son. So, Ishmael. So, these are the generations. Where are we at? Genesis what? 25, 12. 25 and 12. Let me see that. Genesis 25 and 12. Okay, go ahead. Now, these are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son whom Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's handmaid, bare unto Abraham. Uh -huh. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael, by their names, mm. according to their generations. The firstborn of Ishmael, mm. Naboth mm -hmm. and Kedar. So Naboth would be the Nabateans, uh, Nabateans. Go ahead. And which one? And Kedar. And Kedar. And Abdiel. Uh -huh. Ab Abdiel. Yep. And Mibsam. And Mishma. And Duma and Masa, Hadar and Tama, Jeter, Nafish and Kadama. All right, that's enough. All right, so read verse 13 one more time. Verse 13. Yep. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael mm -hmm. by, their, by their names according to their generation. Mm -hmm. The firstborn of Ishmael, Naboth mm -hmm. and Kadar and Ad Adbiel and Mibsam. So the part we want is Kadar. Is Kadar, Kadar. All right. So, Kadar. All right. So, this is a, a book, another book I got. It's called uh, Islam and Christianity, uh, the, A Revealing Contrast, right, by James F. Gauss. Oh. You close, close. All right, cool. You could probably see the title. You probably see that thing. Yeah. All right. This is a book I had pre truth. Look how old it is. Like the cover is coming off, it's unraveling. So, like I said, when I was. When I uh, was studying, I just liked it history, right? But I was trying to kind of disprove the Bible. So this is one of the books that I was uh, reading, trying to figure out which way it was up. You know what I'm saying? So this is the, it showed the differences between the Quran and the Bible. And it kind of lay it all out for you. You know what I'm saying? So you know exactly where to go in here or exactly where to go in here. You know, being a Christian, you don't know where to go. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, right. I have no clue where to go. So I had this book. Uh, but anyway... All right, we're going to look at this. So this say the birth of is the birth of Muhammad in Islam. All right, it says uh the oh, man, I don't even say it. But anyway, say the prophet of Islam or the apostle is Muhammad as as Muhammad is called. So I'm not calling him that. I'm just reading the, the words, right? 
It says was born in 571. Some sources use 570. His father, Abdullah, died before Muhammad's birth and his mother, Amina, died in 577 when he was only six. Muhammad then stayed with his grandfather until he died two years later. Muhammad was raised by his uncle, Abu Talib. Uh, the evidence that a prophet was active among the Arabs in the early decades of the 7th century wrote Patriarch Crone, professor of the Islamic history at Princeton University, must be said to be exceptionally good. Everything else about Muhammad's Crone uh, continue is more uncertain. Uh, we can be reasonably sure that the Quran is a collection of utterances that he made in the belief that they had been revealed to him by God. In 586, I'm trying to get to this Kadesh thing. Okay, in 586 at the age of 15 or 16, Muhammad participated in his in the war of Farja between the Arabian tribes of Hiwazin and Quresh or Quresh. Although a non-combatant, he had the responsibility of recovering the enemy's arrows for his Quresh uncle. All right, so he was from the Quresh tribe, which goes back to Kedar, Kedar. All right, so that's where he comes out of, right? Say his uncle, right, his family. That's where they was from. Go ahead. No, I ain't heavy, man. I, I, just, I just thought it was heavy how uh, they call him a prophet and he got no prophecy. So prophecy, <laughs> less prophet. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was thinking about in my head. <laughs> Let's go to a Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. People just throw that word around, man. Right, right. You're a prophet. Prophecy, less prophet. You need prophecies in order to be a prophet, sir. Use, use your Bible. He got no prophecies. Was Song of Solomon chapter one verse five? You got that. Five, yeah. Song of Solomon chapter one and verse five. Yeah. I am black, but calmly. Yep. Oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem. Yep. As the tents of Kadar. As the tents of Kadar. So when you read in Kadar or Kadar, that's making reference to a very dark skinned people. That's where Muhammad came from, right? He was a very dark skinned brother. Mm -hmm. All right. Why am I going to that? What was the point I was trying to make? Just show where he came out of. Just show where he came out of. he was blue black. He was blue black. Different kind of black. They didn't like you to, but they don't even allow you to make pictures of this man. Of Muhammad, right? Yeah, you make a picture of him. Yeah, they they blowing up the whole spot. Don't draw a picture of that guy. Islam confused me. What'd you say? Y'all get? Oh, uh, you talking about a, uh, not a caliphate. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, where are we going? Uh, let's go back to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Uh, start from where we was at. I think we was at verse 6. John chapter 10 and verse 6. Yeah. This parable spake Jesus unto them, mm -hmm. but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Uh -huh. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Yep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, mm -hmm. but the sheep did not hear them. So it's say everybody else coming, trying to come in a different way are thieves and robbers. Right? Making reference to those uh, Pharisees specifically at that time. But if you try to come into uh, eternal life, if you try to come into the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven by any other way, that's a thief and a robber. You're losing your money. You're losing your time. You're losing everything by following Islam. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not going to receive the promises of God by following that. It's Because it tells you, go back to this thing, this stupid thing one more time. <laughs> what did it say again, man? Hold on, man. It said, it said like 19. It said a bunch of times in here, man. I should have wrote them all down. Everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere about. Go in here, see where my other highlights is at. I should have wrote it down. Oh, okay, let's go to a big one. <laughs> big one. Read that thing right there. We're in the Quran again. What book is this? Uh, <laughs> Surah 10, Jonah, peace be on him. Oh, so this is Sona 10, uh, Surah 10, mm -hmm. Jonah. Peace be upon him. So I guess this is a version of the book of Jonah. All right, let's see what we got. 
And then this is uh, verse 90. It says, uh, Verse we... 90, Surah 90, and Jonah 10. I, I don't know. Surah how y'all 10. Say how y'all say this stuff? Am I saying it right? Y'all. <laughs> well, somebody that was into this stuff, you was no, doing this yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's what I was That's what I'm saying. Like, how was it said, though? I don't want to no, say no, it no, wrong. Surah 10. Because you know how we say, like, John chapter chapter 10, yeah, 10 yeah. verse 6. Surah, you know what I'm saying? Surah is like the chapter, and then you got verse 90. Are you sure? Yeah. Because it looked like. Cause I see ninety way over here. Yeah, but right, the, but it's the, a bunch so, of words in there before you get to eighty. This, this is like the verses. So I, this is the sections, I guess. <laughs> so the reference point. So Surah ten, Surah and then 10. you would say ninety, and then you would go go Surah ahead. ten nine. So Surah ten is Jonah. Right. Okay. Yeah, all right. Right. Cool. Right. Right. All right. But they got me. They reference it by the surahs. Yeah. All right. Cool. And they know it. Cause they just know it like that. Yeah, they know Surah it. Like 10, that. People can recite the Quran, but don't know the truth. So, <laughs> so good. Surah go. ten and verse ninety. Yeah, it says, "And we led the children of Israel." Oh, what? <laughs> and we led the children of Israel yep. through the sea. Through the sea. And Pharaoh and his host followed them in eager and hostile sort until when the drowning overtook him. He said, "I believe that there is no god but He." On whom the children of Israel believe. What? <laughs> Read that part again. He said, I believe that there is no God but he on whom the children of Israel believe. So it tell you again, like I said, when I was reading that thing, I was like, man, this thing is crazy. It's talking about the Bible the whole time. The end part is killing me. Oh, you got it's still more? It's more. It's, and he says, and I am one of the Muslims. <laughs> what, what's oh, killing you about that? Because he says, I believe that there is no God but he on whom the children of Israel believe. And I am one of the Muslims. So you're telling me, even though I'm Muslim, there's only one God. I only Islam. believe that there's that God. <laughs> it's saying it. That's crazy. I don't think, that's what I'm saying. I don't think they relate the word Muslim to a specific the religion, right? Religion. Like mm. they, res, they, when you say Muslim, I believe, I don't know, man. Confusion. That's what yeah, I'm it's a you. bunch of confusion. <laughs> <That's> confusion. <laughs> I can tell you this Quran is confusion. I can tell you that for sure. Like, this is talking about the Bible. Right. It said there's no other God. Right. Let me read it. I got to read it. Let me see what that said again. And yeah. we led the children of Israel through the sea, not the children of Ishmael. Right. It said we led the children of Israel through the sea, and Pharaoh and his host followed them in eager and hostile sort. Until when the drowning overtook him, he said, I believe that there is no God but he on whom the children of Israel believe. There is no God besides the God that the children of Israel believe on. Right. When did they believe on Allah? Right. When did that happen? No, I see. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. And it's in there, too. It's in there. They got like 200. I, I remember when I was in the world, right? There was this uh, top bug that I was. They had this sign. And it had like 200 different names for Allah. It was just like all these different names. names and places that Allah came out of and stuff. When I started researching, it was just like all these different gods that they had turned into Allah. You know what I'm saying? It's confusing. What's that thing, man? I It's, it's in here too, man. I'm going to have to get in here and dig a little bit more. But it's the thing in here where he talk about the flight to Becca, mm-hmm. right? Where he go in and he destroy all of the 300 and whatever gods that they was worshiping right, or right, whatever. Right. Right? Is it coming up there? What they say? Oh, it just say Shalom family. Okay. Um, where are we going? John ten. John ten. We went. We didn't even talk about the nation of Islam. It's already six no, o'clock. We ain't digging. <laughs> we ain't even got to it. Dang! I guess it'll be a part two, cause we we are not even close to the point that I was trying to get to. All right, go ahead. Where are we at? Uh, John ten and verse eight. Yeah. It says, "All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers." So when you look at the life of Muhammad. That's what he did. He was a thief and a robber. Right. <sighs> Let's get it. Go ahead. Find, let me find it right quick. Right. Uh, da, 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 da. Something? Okay. We'll find some. Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9. It says, They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him, for grace and mercy 
is to his saints, and he hath care for his elect. So the Lord, you know, is putting this understanding or giving this understanding to us because we kept his commandments, right? We believed in him. And he took us out of the position we was in, believing in Islam and foolishness like that, to really understand the truth of the Bible. We read it out of the Quran where it says the children of Israel I give out the blessings, right? But before we can see the stuff, we would read it and we would just read right past it and still go believe in Islam, whether that be nation of Islam or just general Islam, right? Verse 10, it says, but the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations, which have neglected the righteous and forsaken the Lord. So you read in the Quran and the Quran says, you are to worship the children of Israel. Your blessings come from the children of Israel. And you just, through your imagination, somehow you skip over that, right? None of that means anything to you. It's, it's just crazy to think that, you know, how blind we were before the Lord woke us up, you know, just reading this stuff. I, I did a couple of Ramadans Dang. in the world. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm telling you. Just, just to be like, oh, I'm a fast. I'm going to see what it's about. And, and it just show you how your imagination is gone you know, and taking you to another place where you'll be destroyed. Read it one more time. It says, but the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations, which have neglected the righteous and forsaken the Lord, right? So your own imagination is what leads you to the point to not believe in the Lord or not follow the Lord. But the, but the Quran is even telling you that you need to follow the Lord. And uh, like the captain was saying, as you read everything and study these different doctrines and religions, you'll see they all point back to the Bible. You know, they all point back to the Bible, but it's just we're so we were so blind in the world and not believing in the truth that we weren't able to see those things. All right. Let's go back. Let's go back. Um, let's look at uh we'll look at this. Okay, so this is uh what they call uh the satanic verses. I think I told you about this before. All right, the satanic verses. Let me get to it. I find I thought that. I thought I had a second ago. Now I can't find it. Yeah, this had it. Oh, there we go. All right. The satanic verses. All right, again. So this is out of this book, uh, Islam and Christianity, a revealing contrast. Right? All right, so this is the satanic verses. This is page 13 of this book. It says, uh, in 619, Muhammad received a revelation that became known in the Islamic tradition as the satanic verses. According to Islamic tradition, Satan, not Allah, once actually spoke through Muhammad's mouth. What? <laughs> Am I, did I read that right? You did. <laughs> Confusion, man. <laughs> so they say Satan was speaking through Muhammad's right. mouth. So as the story has been handed down, Muhammad yearned for the conversion of his own tribe, the Quaresh, right? Like we were talking about before, Kedar or Quaresh, right? It says, to his newfound religion of Islam. But the Quraysh leaders wanted to continue to worship their gods, Alat and Al Uzi. They offered Muhammad a deal. Muhammad would worship their gods for a year, and then they would worship Muhammad's god for a year. In exchange, they would give Muhammad money, wives, and make him their king. Muhammad was tempted, but then this revelation came to him. So they asked him to worship another God, right? And then he said, you worship my God, worship your God, and we'll give you some, some wives and some money, right? All right. So this, this is, I guess this is out of the Quran, 39 and 64. Let's see, where that's at? Is that in here? 39 and 64. What 39 look like? I see Roman numerals. Uh, three X's. Three X's. Let's see. Three X's and what? Nine X. All right, so I'm not going the wrong way or the right way. I got three X's. That's it right there. All right. And then it say what one? 64 and 66. Let's see if this aligns. 
So this is what I was doing when I was first uh, starting to read this thing. I would go into this thing, then I go into this thing, and then try to figure it out. Uh, sixty-four. I'm super confused. It's been a while since I've done this thing. All right. So that's fifty. That'd be sixty. All right. All right. So it says, say what do you then bid me to serve others than I lie, O ignorant man? And certainly it has been revealed to you that those before you, surely if you associate with our life, your work would certainly come to naught, and you would certainly be a loser. Nay, but serve our lie alone and be thankful. It says the Koresh persisted, I mean persisted, however, and Muhammad sought for a solution of the stalemate. And finally, he hit on a solution. He received the revelation saying that it was legitimate for Muslims to pray to Alat, Al Uzi, and Manat, the three goddesses favored by the pagan Koresh as uh, intercessors before Allah. The Koresh, of course, accepted this new revelation with great enthusiasm, and the word rapidly spread that the Koresh had indeed acknowledged Allah as one of their gods. <laughs> I, it's a lot in there. They, they, it was three goddesses yeah. that, that created a god. <laughs> Conf confusion, man. The Bible said the Lord is a man of war, man. <laughs> so, three goddesses. Right, three goddesses came Muhammad together. was worshiping three goddesses. Man. Right, right. That's what it say. I mean, I'm reading it. Yeah. So it's a dude, I think his name is Salman Rashti. Hmm. He wrote the he wrote a book called uh The Satanic Verses, going through all that history. They they killed him, hmm. but bringing out those specific points that you can worship these three other gods. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they killed him. I think it's in here. I think that's where I read it at. Hold on, let me see. I know they killed him because they are wild men. They <laughs> <laughs> talk down on Muhammad, you know. Oh, here we go. Yeah. The Satanic Versus incident. Commented Arthur Robert Spencer has naturally caused Muhammad, I mean, caused Muslims acute embarrassment for centuries. Indeed, it cast a shadow over the veracity of Muhammad's entire claim to be a prophet. While events may be explained in other ways, those who would wish away the Satanic Verses uh, cannot get around the fact that these elements of Muhammad's life were not an invention of the enemies, but were passed along by men who believed he was indeed the prophet of Allah. I ain't worried to tell you about this dude, Salman Rashti. Oh, he's not? Okay, that might not be him then. That might not be him then. I know one of these cats they killed for writing about this thing. Uh, they got that. So that's the one that, is he the one that wrote that book? The Fatwa. Fatwa. So Simon Rashi, he wrote the book, Satanic Verses, and then they put a fatwa on him and, and have attempted to kill him. Okay, all right. I don't know why I thought they killed him. All right. No, <laughs> okay. But he wrote that book, so I'm not crazy. He, he wrote a whole book on it, and they've been trying to kill him ever since. Um, all right, let's go back to John 10. Give me some, give me some Nation of Islam, man. Like, like, Give me what you got, heads. What's their belief system? Nation of Islam. Okay. The main belief of the NOI, the followers, is that there is no other God but Allah. Uh, I want where they – do they break down the difference between Sunni and Shiite in here? I want to know their stance. S U N I. Okay. Uh you see it? I'm confused. S U N N I. Do anybody online know the difference between Sunni and Shiite? I want to know the difference between Sunni and Shiite. Anybody know the difference? Because you hear them over there, they be like, oh, the Sunnis is fighting against the Shiites. 
the Sunnis is fighting against the Shiites. It's going down. Anybody got a clue? Let me know if you see anything pop up, uh, pop up there. <laughs> What'd you say? Somebody said what? Yeah, three garbages. Yeah, crazy. It's Christian. Man, it's crazy. We're just reading the good old Quran, y'all. That's what's in there. I don't know what y'all want me to tell y'all. People was worshiping and following this stuff. Makes no sense. Anyway, anybody know the difference between Sunni and Shiite? Do you know? Not elaborately. What is what is your thought on it? Come on, say it on the mic. Two different sects, but I'm saying what is the di what's the difference? Yes, the ideological differences. You will be amazed to to see what's the ideological differences. How ridiculous it is. What somebody put some? Oh, nobody know. I, what you got? Uh, bloodlines of the Sunnis think. What they say? I can't. Shiites believe in the bloodline of the Sunnis. Think I can't. Uh, nah, I know what it is. Uh, give me a video. Go to YouTube right quick. Is that going to kick us off? Let's probably not do that. Um, so one of them believe, I can't remember which one, soon as the Shiites, but one of them believe that the leader of Islam should come from the bloodline of Muhammad, right? That's the Sunnis. All right. And then the other ones believe that the leader of Islam should come from, he had like 12 disciples, should come out of there. You know what I'm saying? So it was more, they were trying to determine was it a bloodline thing or was it the man that was discipled under Muhammad? You know what I'm saying? So he had 12 disciples, apparently. I doubt it, but whatever. You know what I'm saying? They just make up stuff. But anyway. <laughs> So the nation of Islam, what do they believe though? Do they are they Sunni or Shiite? No. Nah. Bean pot. <laughs> they bean pot. <laughs> are they bean Sunni pot. or Shiite? Let's look it up. Let's look it up, man. What'd you say? I was reading. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. What you got? Read that. What did it say? I can't read. What are, what are you talking about? Uh, I don't know what I'm reading. What is this? Uh, yeah. I know this is wiki, but what part? What is this going into? History? Nah, it should say like their beliefs. Yeah. Yeah, it should be in there. Uh, the 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 nation of Islam. Uh, far dispersed. Hold on, I found the last night. Hold on. I said, all right, I got it. It says, the main belief of the nation of Islam is that there is 
no guy but Allah. They say that Allah came in the person of Wallace D. Farad, who founded the Nation of Islam. Their type of Islam is different from Sunni and Shiite uh, Muslims. Oh, it's different. It's different from Sunni and Shiite Muslims. Okay. Let's see. Their type of Islam is different from Sunni and Shiite Muslims. Their teaching under Islamic uh, standards do not allow making any person divine or treating God as a human. Christians. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Christians. They don't take a stance. You know what I'm saying? Like with most Christians, they want to just play this role of like nothingness and think that that's what's going to get them into the kingdom of heaven. Last night, I think I was watching, uh, what was I watching, man? What's your boy, uh, D.O. Hughley? He had some Christian singer on there or something. And she was talking about, well, I just believe just in Christ and that you just got to be a good person. And he was like, well, I'm, I don't believe in Christ, but I still believe I got to be a good person. You know what I'm saying? Like, the heck are you talking about? Like, it's like we want to take this stance of nowhereness and think that since we get in this place of we don't have a firm belief that that's what's going to give us uh, the right to the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. You can say that. Well, just, it go back to, like, not having a backbone. Right. right? Like, slavery, we ain't really had no backbone coming out of that. Right. And then we, we tried to at certain times, but the majority of us were, like, afraid. Like, people like Malcolm X and these leaders, people were afraid of them. So then when they get to today, these brothers just are moving, like, we're going to move fluid because whatever direction we need to go, we're going to go that way because we think it'll benefit us, I guess, in this life. Right? And then they tie it to the kingdom. Somehow, some way, they tie that to the kingdom, but it's our imagination. I, I don't. That's always the thing, right? It don't, it's no clear path on how to get into the kingdom of heaven. Right. Like, they just give you, like, some right. smoke and mirrors. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. it's just just believe on Christ. Well, what does believe mean? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, give me some, just believe on Allah, brother. Like, what does that mean? Exactly. When I read the Quran, it tells me to believe in the God of the Bible. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the heck are you talking right, about? Exactly, exactly. Makes no sense. Tell you, tell you right? In right. the Quran, it tell you to worship three goddesses. Yep. <laughs> what are you right. talking about? Right. What am I supposed to be doing? What's the direction? Exactly. Just confusion. Um, Sell bean pies and final calls, brother. <laughs> and you in <laughs> Every, Everything will get done that way. Come on, let's go to Deuteronomy 2864. Right. You know what? Let's go to Jeremiah. We ain't did that one in a while. Let's do some Jeremiah. What is it? Nah, I want a uh, homeborn slave. Mm-mm-mm-mm. What's that? Jeremiah chapter 2. All right. Let's uh, start at, uh, let's start at, dang, I like, like, all let's start at 1. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 1. Yeah. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus said the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth. The love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. Mm. Israel was holiness unto the Lord, and the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him shall offend. Mm. Evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. So all that try to come against us, the Lord is going to destroy them at some point. You know what I'm saying? Right. Go ahead. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob and all the families of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, Mm. and have walked after vanity, and are become vain? And become full of lies. Right? Read that verse again. Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me? So what iniquity, what sin did we find in the Lord? What unrighteousness did we find in the Lord? Every time we did something wrong he punched us he never put what he's saying is that he never punched us for no reason you know what i'm saying when he sent them serpents or he sent that flood or whatever it was that he sent it was due sure. that whooping was due you know what i'm saying i remember when i was a kid right i get in trouble and then like 
you know, my mom be like, I'm gonna get you when I get home. And then the whole way home, like, I'd be like praying, be like, Lord, please let her forget. <laughs> let her just forget that she said she's gonna give me a whooping. Come on, read that part again. Thus said the Lord, what iniquity have your fathers found in me uh -huh. that they are gone far from me yep. and have walked after vanity and are become vain. And walked after vanity, right? We looking in the Quran, right? And we see what? A bunch of confusion. Right, we looking in here is telling you to believe on the God of Israel. We looking in here to tell you to worship three gods. Right, it's a, it's some parts in here, man, that tell you that the Lord created the heaven and earth in uh, six days, and then it's another part that say the Lord created the heaven and earth in eight days. That's in the Quran. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna find it next time. We're gonna continue this. Go ahead, come on. Neither said they. Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt? Mm -hmm. And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, ye defiled my land mm -hmm. and made mine heritage an abomination. So when we enter, we start worshiping other gods and stuff. Go ahead. The priest said not, where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. Mm -hmm. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after things that do not profit. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, I will, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. Go ahead. For pass over the isles of Chittim. So pass over the isles of Chittim, right? They're saying, hey, man, let go of that stuff. Right, pass over the laws of Chittim. So Chittim, that would be like Rome today, or that that we. I mean, well, when you're looking at Chittim, that we're going into prophetically Rome, right? Uh, but at that time, during the time of Jeremiah, that would be uh, Japheth, right? Go ahead. For pass over the isles of Chittim uh -huh. and see, and send unto Kedar, and consider diligently. And see if there be such a thing. So it said, and send them to Kedar. He said, look, go look at Kedar and see if it's anything in there. And consider. And that's what we just did. Right. We looked in this Quran, right? Kedar is making reference to Ishmael, Ishmael and them, right? He said, consider, see if it's anything over there. In comparison to what? Look at verse 5 again. Verse 5. Yeah. Thus saith the Lord, what iniquity have your fathers found in me? What iniquity do you find in this Bible? But we can go in the Quran, and we can find all type of confusion. Oof. I'm just getting warmed up. <laughs> I'm like, dang, it's already 622. Right. I ain't even hit half the stuff. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, go back to verse 10. Verse 10. Yeah. For pass over the isles of Chittim uh -huh. and see, uh -huh. and send unto Kadar and consider he, diligently. He said, look in the, see, look, consider diligently. There ain't nothing in that. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. And see if there be such a thing. Mm, if it be such a thing as what? As what we read in verse 5. He said, is there any iniquity in there? It ain't none. Right? It ain't none in the Bible, but it is something here. I'll say it like that. Go ahead. Had a nation changed their gods? But yet, these Sunnis, these Shiites, right, even though they're not in the Grints, they haven't changed their gods. Mm. Go ahead. Which are yet no gods. They ain't even no gods, though. Go ahead. But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Well, that that does not profit. We change, We say, you know what? We're going to be Muslims. That don't profit us at all. I'm telling you, when you look at, go to Deuteronomy 28. Watch this. Go to Deuteronomy 28. Let's look at verse 64. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 64. Yep. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, mm -hmm. from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. Mm -hmm. And there thou shalt serve other gods, mm. which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So it say we're going to be serving other gods, right? Other gods. But that serving of other gods is very typical of how we as the children of Israel move. You know what I'm saying? Because when we look at Genesis, what did it say that Ishmael was going to be? Wild man. A wild man. But when you look at the nation of Islam over here, do you see any of them with C4 strapped to their chest? They MLK <laughs> kind of brothers nowadays. They're, they're real relaxed. 
I'm saying, man, you see these cats over there in, in, in Afghanistan and all the other stands, right? You see them over there. They got the the biggest beards in the world with AK-47s. Right. And then you look at these cats on this side. Do you even see beards on their face? Nah, shaving. <laughs> they just shave their face. Man. What are they talking about? Right. Why, why do they over there got beards, but these cats over here saying that they Islam, they they Muslims, got no beards on their face? I can't understand it. Right, right. They in the shade. They shade their whole head. They whole, but they like they got the whole clean, clean. <laughs> not, well, clean I don't say clean, but dirty. They got the whole dirty shave. You right, right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the dirty. Shave. They got the dirty shave. You right. That's the way to call it now, right. man. It ain't clean right. shave. See, You're they right. play. See, they yeah, wash your mind. Yeah, they put they some confuse you. In. They put some in there. You <laughs> call it clean <laughs> shaving. Nah, it's unclean. You're it's right. unclean shaving. You right. Dirty shaving. Uh, where I'm at. Go back to Jeremiah. Oh, man, I'll be saying that all week. Dirty shaving. Bro. Dirty shaving, bro. Right. That ain't clean, bro. <laughs> Jeremiah me. 2 and verse 11. Yeah. Had the nation changed their gods, uh -huh. which are yet no gods, uh -huh. but my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Because it don't profit them. How doesn't it profit you, right? We was going to get to this, so maybe I guess we'll get to it next time. But they got something called the Arab League of Nations, right? right. Where they work together. They profit together amongst themselves. It's a nation of Islam involved in the Arab League of Nations. Hell no. <laughs> they are not included. I say nay. They, they, they <laughs> say they change it to a guy that does not profit you. <laughs> right. They are not even included in this Arab League of Nations where they work out money and they got the they military working together and different things like that just like the eu right they got an arab league of nations you think what i'm saying read that thing again it don't profit them read that again hath the nation changed their gods uh -huh. which are yet no gods yeah but my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit yep be astonished so you have he said be astonished look at these idiots right be astonished these deep dummies, man, with the Quran in their hand, don't understand what they reading at all. And I was there too, right? You was there, yep. Right? Any of y'all read the Quran over there? Nah, they like, nah, we ain't pick that thing up. You clean the place <laughs> up here, man. Hey, man, I was reading that thing. It's a lot of things, uh, a lot of downtime. You know what I'm saying? In my job, sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So I just sit at work and just read that thing. I was on the quest for God, but I guess I found three goddesses. You found three goddesses. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There you go. Amat, <laughs> Uzziah, Alhazi, whatever her name was. Man. Come on, let's read that thing again. Be astonished, O ye heavens, yep. at this, and be horribly afraid. Uh -huh. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. For my people have committed two evils. Two evils. They have forsaken me. The fountain of living waters and hewed them out cisterns. And hewed them out cisterns. Go ahead. Broken cisterns that can hold no water. This is a broken cistern because, again, when you look at the nation of Islam, it don't hold no water, right? They don't know if they Sunni or they Shiites, right? They don't, they don't, uh, they don't got no beards on their face. What does the final call associate with in reference to what's going on over there in reference to the caliphate in which they want to create? You think what I'm saying? Who are they backing? Iran or Iraq? Right. Kuwait or Turkey. Right. What are they doing? Getting money. Getting money. Yeah, that's that's what we was reading in John chapter 10. Right. That's all they doing. Because the, the belief system in which the Quran says the nation of Islam don't got nothing to do with that. Right. You listen to these cats speak, man. What's his name? Uh, uh, Farrakhan. Farrakhan yeah. When do we read out the Quran? <laughs> Never. I, I seen him speak in person before. It was no Quran used whatsoever. It's not even a, in the building. Anybody was, got anybody got a I man, he ain't even bring it out. <laughs> just, it was just some fruit of Islam standing in front of him and he was just talking. It was on Howard campus. He's just talking. He ain't say nothing at all. All stuff out of his mind. See how you gotta throw Howard in there? Why you gotta throw Howard in there? I'm man? just saying. I'm telling you where what. Oh, oh all right, all right, all right, it ain't even that serious. All right, all right, cool. cool. <laughs> I just threw it in the story. All right, y'all, it's just six thirty, <laughs> and we didn't get to like half the stuff no. we wanted to get to. I appreciate you, brothers and sisters, man. <laughs> uh, I appreciate Officer JDL, Officer Heads, Officer Azariah, man. I appreciate y'all, brothers. Uh, we'll be back, and we will have lots more to come on Islam. You know what I'm saying on. Well, I, I really want to look at the difference between Nation Islam 
and a real Muslim. Bean pies and bow ties versus AKs and C4. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, that's the title. <laughs> that's part. That's the title. <laughs> Write it down. Oh, hi, it is real man. If y'all uh, got any questions for me, uh, can you throw my email up there right quick before we jump out of here? Uh, Zabit.Israel, IsraelUnite.org. Um, what else? What else going on? Anything else going on? Steph, no. keep the commandments more than anything, right? Remember ATC. to do that, man. Feast of First Fruits coming up. Yes, sir. We about to get it in out here in San Diego. You know what I'm saying? So I hope everybody preparing. Um, Lord's will. Uh, we'll be back. Same bat time, same bat channel next week. Yep. And uh, we'll go further. Over. We'll go further because we had to we had to we had to start at the base of it. Had to show them what the Quran was about. What the Quran was about, mm -hmm. where it came from. Mm -hmm. Then we'll go into the nation of Islam. I was trying to get there. Mm -hmm. I was like, dang, just time just fly by. Um so with that, Israel, I'm gonna say shalom to y'all. Most high Christ bless. Shalom, y'all, most high Christ bless.